KJ4YZI here, Ham Radio Concepts. I have a video that I've wanted to make a little while and I haven't been able to get a hold of this man, Jerry, K4WOF. Um, he's a member around here I talk to, the local club, and I want to show you, I'm going to let him explain what he made here. And this is a video in itself on, if you're not familiar with amateur satellites, this is by far impressive. And I'm gonna let Jerry show you exactly what this is. If you're not familiar, there are amateur satellites out there. You can work even starting with an appropriate handheld and antenna up to some kind of array like this that will automatically track it. So let me hear what Jerry has to say. All right, Jerry, tell me, uh, tell me about this device here. Tell me all about it. Sure, Eric, thanks. Um, th well, this is called the Tricked Out RAPS. RAPS is uh, an acronym uh, that was uh, developed by Mark Spencer, WA8SME. And Mark designed this entire system, and you can get the plan from him from AMSAT. And uh, basically, you buy the components, such as this printed circuit board, from AMSAT, and then you have to build it yourself. You have to buy all of these components from, say, uh, a robot shop and uh, assemble it as you wish. So it's using a pair of um, antennas, UHF, VHF antennas from Arrow. And the reason it's using two antennas is so that we can deal with uh, the polarity of the satellites as they're tumbling. So I can switch the polarity back and forth between the two antennas with this switch. And, uh, and also, today we have it set up so that it's controlled remotely from the operating station about 75 feet away inside this conduct. Which is over in here. Which is over in there. Okay, so to, so, okay, this thing, you find out when satellites are gonna come by, and basically this will track based on the information you put into it, is that correct? Well, it's based on information that you download uh, from the NASA, the Keplerian data, and then based on that data, this can track the satellite as it's moving across. Okay, so it's here is the, this is for what, the elevation? That's the elevation motor and gears, and the azimuth motor is inside this uh, four inch cube. Okay, so there's an antenna on each side, is one for transmitting and one for receiving? Uh, yes, that's correct. So you have one for UHF, one for VHF, uplink and downlink. That's right. You actually have two oh. UHF and two VHF. Right, right, yeah, okay. You're, you're only using one on the uplink, the UHF, typically the UHF. But on uh, the downlink, you're switching back and forth uh, between the two for the polarity of the satellite as it's moving. Right. And then inside, well, I'll show you how the controls work. But what we're also doing is, since it's so far away, we've set up this camera so I can watch it wow. uh, from inside the uh, operating station. It's basically just a, a drone camera. That's a Runcam Eagle, and uh, it's wire wireless transmitting on uh, 5.8 gig. So you can see your antenna while it's moving, and, and make sure it's moving as you're tracking the uh, satellite. That's right. Very cool. So I'll have to go inside and take a look at what you got here. But you had to solder this whole board here. Yes, I had to solder that. But Mark has made it very clear. So the kit is available online. It's not really or a kit. Not the kit, but the schematics. The plan, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The plan and the circuit board. So these, you said, are aero antennas. They're aero antennas. I, uh, so you could actually use just the aero antennas for handheld use. That's correct. But you're using the more extravagant way of... Uh, did you manufacture all this? I mean, did you buy all these pieces? Buy all these pieces from a robot shop and... Uh, Assemble it to get you know. Assemble it the way you wish. Mine's a little different than yours would be. <laughs> that is very cool. How long does it take you to set something like this up? Oh, I have many, many hours in it, Eric. I have no idea. Too many. I mean, for, no. I mean, for for you to take this apart right now and move it down the road, what would that entail? Oh, I understand your question. It would uh, probably take about two hours. All right. And then you have to, I'm sure, line it up with Newton, with North or, or wherever to find out. That's uh, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the camera idea. That's very cool. Let's go take a look inside and see what we got. Okay.
Okay, Eric, um, as we discussed yesterday, the satellite tracker, we're monitoring it with uh, a drone camera. It's a Runcam Eagle, and we're using this uh, small monitor to uh, observe what's going on with the, with the antenna. For example, we can see it moving from this operating station, which is 75 feet oh, away from the rotor. Out. Yes, it's moving. And uh, so that antenna is feeding into two ICOM 7000 radios, one for the uplink and one for the downlink. Uh, the two radios and this tracker are being steered, are being controlled by uh, the software on this PC, which is SAT PC32. And so uh, at any point, if a satellite is within range of, of uh, the tracker, we can bring that particular satellite up here, execute the commands, and uh, we can see here that this particular satellite, which is AO27, and we're receiving the downlink on 436, the uplink is 145. You can see that it's steering these two radios uh, frequency. The satellite uh, program is also adjusting for Doppler effect. You can see the Doppler, the frequency is shifting right. as the Doppler is uh, so this, making So this its takes way. the Keplerian data and it pretty much makes this automated so that it can track the satellite from acquisition of signal to loss of signal without having to be standing out there with an antenna doing it manually. That's correct. Now, for the person that's going to ask, well, I'll never do satellite because this looks like a lot of money. Can you do satellite with just a regular handheld and a regular uh, handheld aero antenna? Absolutely. In fact, uh, the tracker is using two handheld antennas just mounted to uh, that mechanism. Right. And so it's ideally you would have a full duplex handheld radio. Uh, you can do it without a full duplex, but it's much easier that way. Actually, and my, just my Ushan uh, UV... 9D is a du full duplex handheld. Uh, Wushan UV9D, there's a video on my channel on that. That's uh, So you can transmit into a satellite on the uplink on two meters and hear yourself on UHF at the same time. That's yeah. exactly right. Right. But with a regular handheld, you could do this and just have to know or guess that you're making it into the satellite, right? That's right. Okay. Very cool. And how many watts are you normally running on something like this? Oh, as little as possible as we typically do as hams, uh, from 5 to no more than 25. Uh, sometimes you want to use a little more power to, to break through a pileup, especially here at Field Day. Yeah. Have you heard a lot of stations on there today? Uh, none today, unfortunately, but uh, we heard quite a few yesterday. Yeah. I appreciate your time uh, looking at this here. What an amazing array outside that you have. Um, I watched you with the progress of that thing. and. You definitely have put a lot of work into it, so I'm proud of you, Jerry. Thanks very much, Eric. And I um, hope everybody enjoyed this video. Leave your comments below and let me know what you think about Jerry's satellite tracker. 7-3.